been hearing voices telling me that I could never be what I want to be. They're binding me with lies, haunting me at night and saying there's nothing to believe. Somewhere in the quietness, when I'm overcome with loneliness, I hear you call my name. And like a father, you were near. And as I listen, I can hear you say, Life is beautiful, and everything seems so good. It's a perfect life, and nothing seems wrong. But behind every smiling face, there could be scars, fears, anxiety, guilt, hurts and struggles. Many a times we use a smile to mask away our emotions and give people around us the impression that everything's okay. Have you ever felt this way? Defeated, enslaved, addicted, crippled? Remember, nobody is perfect, but God's grace is more than sufficient to help us overcome and free us from what holds us down. Free at Last is a series that will help us discover the truth from God's word that our lives are worth living because Jesus paid the price for our redemption and has set us free by His blood. 
For this is love, that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. Hi there and greetings and welcome to this episode of Living Strong. Uh, it's our joy and delight to be able to come your way and uh, bring the Word of God to you. I want to take a moment to say thanks to all of you who've been uh, writing to us. It's, it's great for us to know uh, where people are watching this telecast and how these programs are enriching your life. And so we really appreciate you taking the time to do that. And as always, we want to remind you that we have our web church website that's available with lots of resources uh, a lot of our previous programs, our uh, publications available in electronic format that you could download and uh, use uh, to build yourself up. Over last week, we actually began a series uh, that is addressing a very important area in our lives, uh, the area of freedom. And uh, in our previous episode, we uh, try to understand what freedom really is. And we made the statement that Freedom really is the ability to choose what is right and also the ability to refuse or say no to what is wrong. When we lose that ability, we've actually lost our freedom. And so here we are on this journey of, uh, first of all, facing up to the fact that there could be some areas in our lives as individuals uh, where we could be enslaved, whether it's in the area of our behavior or whether it's in the area of our emotions and the way we feel and look at things, uh, to first of all face up to that fact, and then uh, to begin to understand and receive uh, the work of the Lord Jesus in our lives to bring freedom into those areas. And I, and I want to encourage you that you know, no matter what is enslaving you today, whether it's things in your behavior, you know, maybe some of us could be bound by addict addictions, uh, to substances or other kinds of things that enslave us, or whether it's emotional things, no matter what you recognize in your life as uh, something that's dominating you or enslaving you, I want to give you and assure you that the Lord Jesus is able to set us free. Jesus made this statement. He said, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. If He sets you free, there is total freedom, true freedom, in your life and mine. Now, on the program today, I want to talk about behaviors and, and, and lifestyle patterns in which we could get enslaved and, and become imprisoned in lives. And I want to just begin to talk about, first of all, why do we get enslaved? I mean, why do people end up becoming prisoners in life? What, what, what leads us into those prisons that we find ourselves in? And I want to just present a few thoughts to us here uh, on why we might get ourselves enslaved. You know, first, uh, first off, it could simply be the rationale or the thinking that everybody's doing it, everybody's doing the same thing, and so uh, why not me? It's socially acceptable. You know, for example, a simple thing like drinking alcohol. You know, we, many people begin by thinking like, oh, it's, it's just a social thing. Uh, I just do it for, uh, uh, you know, a, a social, I'm just a social drinker. And so people get into that from that perspective. And uh, before long, they find themselves enslaved to alcohol, unable to come out of it. And it never stops. Um, think about uh, live-in relationships. They're young people. They, they, they finish college. They get into their uh, work environment. And they meet other young people who are just living together. They don't think about marriage they, uh, as, as a serious thing. And, uh, and, and so everybody else is drawn to it. And they say, well, everybody's doing it, so let me also do it. And before long, it becomes an enslaving lifestyle pattern by which they live. And like this, there are many other things that we get our, people get into simply because everybody's doing it, so let me also do it. You know, uh, we call it peer pressure sometimes. It's, it's the, just the... Uh, the collusion of everybody's thought and idea, and so you become part of it. Uh, sometimes uh, it's an expression of our rebellion, you know, especially as young people who go out from home, we want to say, you know, I want to show my parents that I'm my own boss. And then we start doing things more out of rebellion towards authority over our lives, and then we get into uh, wrong kinds of things. Sometimes uh, it's a status symbol. You know, just to show others that you've reached a certain status in society, 
uh, you begin to do things that people expect uh, of those who have reached that level. And, and you, you start doing things more as a status symbol, uh, but those things begin to enslave uh, people. Or sometimes it's, it's, it's a desire for excitement. You know, maybe life gets a little boring. You're doing the same things. So you're looking for something that will be exciting, add some spice to life. And in, in a pursuit of excitement, uh, you actually get into things that eventually become prisons and, uh, and enslave us. You know, so all of these things that uh, actually lead us into what we call as sin. And sin affects our relationship with God. It destroys our personal lives. It destroys our, many times, it destroys our, our relationships with each other. Our sin has, uh, affects our eternal destiny. The Bible tells us that the result of sin is death, which is separation from God in hell. And sin also enslaves us. It, it ho- makes us prisoners and holds us enslave, uh, as slaves. You know, Hebrews 12 and verse 1 says, uh, uh, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares. So sin really is a trap. It's a prison that it, we find it find so hard to get out of. Another reason why we uh, get enslaved in life and why we walk in these prisons is simply because as human beings, we have the natural tendency to seek pleasure and avoid pain. You know, anything that's pleasurable, we keep returning to uh, and we keep going back and going back and going back. And what happens? That becomes a habit and then slowly becomes a prison. I'm not saying that everything that's pleasurable is wrong, but the point is, Very often, sin itself uh, comes not in the form of something hurtful, but sin comes in the form of something that's pleasurable. And so we respond to it that way, and we keep going back to it. And as human beings, we seek pleasure. We seek immediate gratification. And as we give ourselves to the pursuit of pleasure, we find ourselves as slaves to those very things. For instance, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs 21 and verse 17, He who loves pleasure will be a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not be rich. He who loves pleasure, that means he gives himself to a life of pleasure, just doing things that bring immediate gratification. He says he will not be a rich man. He's going to be a poor man. His life is going to be just wasted away. Uh, Ecclesiastes 2 and verse 1, King Solomon said, you know, he said, I will test my heart with mirth and I will enjoy pleasure, but surely this also was vanity. Now Solomon said, you know, I'll just try to enjoy pleasure, but in the end what he found out was it was a vain thing. Uh, Pleasure itself is not going to satisfy us uh, for a long time. And then on the other hand, we are people who tend to avoid pain. And in an attempt to avoid pain, we get into lots of wrong things. You ask, for instance, you ask somebody, you know, why did you start smoking? And and you might hear him say, you know, I just started smoking because there was so much of pressure at work. I just wanted to find a way to, you know, release, relieve myself of some stress. And uh, as a way to escape the tension and the pressure at work, you know, maybe he just started smoking. And so what happened? Slowly, he became an addict to that. And that just became an enslaving habit. So in an attempt to avoid pain, He actually went into something that enslaved his life. So here's the second reason why we find ourselves enslaved, why we walk into prisons in the life, because we tend, we as human beings, we tend to seek pleasure and we tend to avoid pain. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, chapter 14 and verse 12, there is a way that seems right to man, but the end of it is a way of death. There are many things that look right, and we get into, but eventually it only leads to destruction. A third reason why um, we find ourselves in prisons and things that enslave us uh, is because of denial. We refuse to accept that we are actually slowly beginning to lose our freedom. And because of that, that process of denial and that stage of denial, we just keep progressing further and further into things that eventually the door, prison door closes behind us. You know, uh, Dr. Uh, David Hawkins, in his book, uh, Breaking Everyday Addictions, he lists several different ways in which we live in denial or begin 
the process of denial that we are actually losing our freedom. Uh, for instance, here are some of the things he lists, and I'll just share them with you. Rationalization is one of the ways uh, that people begin to lose their freedom. Rationalization is simply a process by which something that's irrational, an irrational behavior in our lives, we begin to explain away as though it was just normal, as though it was just rational. Uh, uh, sometimes we, uh, we tend to get into things that, we, that is definitely not the norm, but we explain it away as normal. We say, okay, it's, that's all right, we can continue doing that. Or justification, meaning even though I'm doing something wrong, I tell myself, it's right. It's okay. Take, for example, a man who's, uh, uh, or a man or a woman who's engaging in some sort of an adulterous relationship, an extramarital affair. Uh, they realize in the very beginning that, hey, this is wrong. I'm not supposed to be in, in this kind of a thing. I'm not supposed to be going down this path. Uh, but they begin to then reason and say, you know, no, 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 this is right. Uh, they have the reasons of explaining something that is wrong as right as though it was okay, as though it is acceptable. And in the process of doing it, they just find themselves enslaved to that uh, behavior. Or there's another way we didn't live in denial. It by, we call it minimization, which is we uh, insist that the problem is not really that big of a problem. You know, it's just a passing thing. It just, you know, the, the impact will not be great. Think about a workaholic. You know, as he engages in his work and he just uh, gets lost in his work and his world around him begins to collapse, he says, you know, no, that, that the real problem is, is not the real problem. He begins to minimize the effect of, uh, of his workaholism, if you will. Procrastination is another way of living in denial. We say, I'll deal with it later. And I talk about the guy who started drinking, and when, it, when it, his problem was addressed, he said, you know, no, maybe later on in life, I'll step out of it. But later on in life, he just finds himself a bigger slave and more impossible, more difficult to come out of it. And so procrastination is a form of denial that just leads us into greater enslavement. Victimization, saying that I'm actually suffering because of somebody else's uh, uh, actions. You know, I'm a victim of abuse, or I'm a victim of uh, mistreatment by somebody else, and that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm reacting to life like this. And so we see ourselves as victims, and therefore excuse ourselves in our behavior and the things that we're getting into, that, and these things actually end up imprisoning us. Or blaming, putting the blame on somebody else, saying, you know, it's not my fault that I'm doing this. If people just treated me right, or if people supported me more, or if people were around me more, I wouldn't be doing these kinds of things. So we put the blame on somebody else. We refuse to take responsibility of our own actions. And in the process, we're just living in denial, and we just keep walking further in our prisons. And like this, we could make thousands of excuses. Uh, and all these are just forms of denial. I don't even notice I'm lying. I'm not willing to face up with the truth. And the fact is that denial may provide a temporary sense of escape, but only it's leading us further into our problem. And fourth reason, fourthly why, the reason why many of us walk into our prisons is, and, and stay in our prisons in life is simply because we find ourselves enslaved. We find ourselves in a situation where we can't come out. We are powerless to come out. And the Bible does this talk about such situations. For instance, in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 26, the Bible says that uh, people need to come to our senses and to escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. So there is a place where we are ensnared by the devil and we are taken captive by him. So there's a trap that the devil's laid up for us and we are held hostage and held captive and we find ourselves powerless to come out of it. And so we just accept this life of imprisonment this, the life as it is. But I want to bring hope to you and me uh, on the program today that no matter how much you've progressed into your prison, no matter what form of denial you've, you've engaged in and that has led you further and further into captivity or prison, you know, there is hope. If you and I will be willing to face up with, with reality, we'll face up to the, the reality of our prison, there is hope we can come out of our prison. I want you to understand that the prisons that you and I live in 
they really uh, ruin our lives. They destroy our lives. First of all, these prisons limit our true potential. Now, God has designed you for something so much more greater, something so much more bigger. But because of the prison that you walked into, because of the things that enslave you, your potential is, so, is limited. And it keeps you from realizing your true potential, what God designed you to be. Our prisons also cause us to waste away slowly and steadily. Think about a man who's got great talent, great skill, great ability. If you lock him up in a cell somewhere, what's going to happen to all that talent? What's going to happen to all that gift that he has? It's just going to remain unused. And slowly and steadily, it's going to waste away. And that's what our prisons do to us, whether they are prisons in our behavior, in our lifestyle, or in our emotional prisons. They just cause our talents and gifts to be wasted away slowly and steadily. And these prisons rob us of our destiny. They rob us of our life purpose, of what we were really designed to accomplish in life. And uh, that seems that just uh, disappears because of these prisons. Life becomes hopeless, sometimes meaningless, because of, of we, when we find ourselves uh, trapped in these prisons. So I want to challenge you. That is one very important thing for you and me to walk out of our prison is to face up with reality to come to recognize that, yes, I am in prison, a certain prison in my life, and I need to find a way out. And on this program, I want to challenge you. If you would be willing to do that, then as we continue on the next few episodes, I believe that you will discover your road to freedom. But the first thing is to come out of denial, to come face to face with, with the reality that maybe there's a prison or maybe several prisons that entrap you. And they're willing to face up to it. You recognize what it is doing to you, how it's robbing you of your potential and causing you to waste away, and you're willing to reach out for help. If you're willing to take that step, I believe you're on your road to freedom. Before we close the program today, I would like to pray with us and pray with those of us here, or of those of us who are just willing to recognize, or beginning, beginning to recognize that probably I was living in denial and I'm willing to face up to the truth that there are prisons in my life that are destroying my life and I'm willing to reach out for help. If you're willing to do that, I want you to join me in prayer right where you are. I believe that the Lord Jesus will step into your life and lead you into perfect freedom. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for what we heard today. And I pray for those, O oh Lord, who are willing to accept the fact that there could be prisons, there could be certain things in life that is actually enslaving them, holding them down, limiting their potential, robbing them of their destiny. And God, that they're willing to reach out to you for help. Lord Jesus, I ask that you will reach out to them, take a hold of them, lead them into their freedom, into their liberty, so that they can become what you've designed them to be. And I pray, Lord, you'll do a great work in their lives. And I ask this, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us on the telecast today. And uh, stay with us over the coming weeks as we talk more about being free at last. And I believe that Jesus Christ will bring freedom into your life. Until we meet again next week, remember, the best way to live is to live life the Jesus way. We invite you to visit our church website, www.apcwo.org, where we provide several free resources, including MP3 sermons, sermon notes, and free publications that you can download and use. You can also call, email, or write to us to request your free printed copy of our publications. Please feel free to share your comments and prayer requests when you contact us. Make it your declaration this morning. I'm not gonna live by what I feel.
down, I know that he's with me. Deep down, I know that you're here with me. Yes, oh God, yes, oh God, I know that you can do anything. Yeah, through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Since you gives me strength. I believe. 